Welcome to St. Margaret. We especially greet all visitors and guests The readings for today's Mass 44 of the Gather Hymnal. That's page number 1144. Brabham, Anastasia Brokey, Karen Chimay, Veronica Chenier, Pauline Larry and Troy McKinney, Francis Cronledge, Mike and Elizabeth Crope, Andrew, Crystal McFadden, Mike Michon, Lynette Piffner, Peter J. and Elizabeth Piffner, Mary Resitar, Frank and Denise Smith, that they might come to the table of the Lord to encourage and deepen our own faith to be in singing Christ. We, we come to break thy bread, we come to know our rising from the dead, we come as your people, we come as your own. United with each other, love finds a home. We Church with me. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It is through Our baptism that God gives us new life in abundance. And so as we begin our liturgy today, we welcome two of God's newest children within full communion in our faith community. At the birth of these children, and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy has brought you to the Our community rejoices with you, for today the number of the baptized in Christ will be increased, and we offer these children in the practice of the faith. And therefore, brothers and sisters, for these children and their family, and renewing our commitment to the Lord and his people. And so I ask, what name have you given these children? And what do you ask of God's church for Jacob and Luke? Baptism. In asking for baptism for these children, you are undertaking the responsibility of raising them in the faith, so that keeping God's commandments, they may love the Lord and their neighbor. Parents, do you understand this? And my dear godparents, are you ready to help the parents of these children in their duty? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of Glory to God, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We pray to we are. God, heaven, mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. The sins of the world, have mercy on us. Us. For you alone are the Holy You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the Father. Amen. of goodwill. Let us pray. Your servant with unseen. For those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Amen. A 
the whole as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather the daily portion. Thus I will... evening twilight you shall eat flesh and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread so that you may know that I the Lord am your God in the evening quail came up and covered the camp in the morning a dew lay on about all the camp and when the dew evaporated there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Give them bread from heaven. Thy Lord gave them bread from heaven. We will tell to the next generation the glories of commanded the clouds above, and opened the gates of heaven. He rained down manna to eat, and gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, he sent them abundance of food, so he brought them to his holy land, to the mountain. The Lord gave them reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the futility of their minds. There is not in how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. Your former way of life corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirits of your mind, and put on the the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
one does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia. 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 Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Rabbi, when Because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes. The man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? This is the work of God. Send. So they said to him, What signs can you do that we may see and believe in you? Or what can you do? As it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, actually, we had a wedding in here, and it's hot outside, and the air conditions are working overtime right now. It's actually condensation that's coming from the top of the ceiling, so if you get smacked in the middle of mass, well, you just got to deal with it. Either that or I could turn the air condition off, uh, whichever would actually be your pleasure today. The second, people have asked me, well, Father Paul was here like one weekend, and then you disappeared him. We haven't seen him again. Well, a lot of our priests have been exposed to or tested positive for the coronavirus. So natural has been on the circuit, helping out all those other parishes in different places. So you're not going to see him much of this weekend. You might not see him next weekend and the weekend after that either, unless to visit with him a little bit yourself. So just wanted to give you an update. No, I didn't kick him out of the rectory just yet, um, but you'll actually see him if you come for weekday mass probably a little bit more than you might see him on the weekend. Uh, we're blessed here at St. Margaret, right? A beautiful church, a wonderful apparatus, good technology that usually works. Sometimes it always doesn't. Uh, but there are a lot of parishes that are not things like for example they didn't have the wonderful Madonna mic that you see me wearing every single weekend uh, they had this really strange contraption what in the world is he talking about which you usually see on the side over here, was actually hardwired. So I was actually connected to the sound system back and forth. Problem is, you know how I preach every weekend. I'm sort of in the batter's box, and I move around a little bit. 
And that particular weekend, I was new to the parish. I have the wire that was attached to me, and I was moving around over and over again. And before you know it, I realized that I was tangling myself up with the cable that was actually attached to me. But no matter, I kept going on preaching, let the Spirit motivate me to say what I needed to say, until in the middle of my homily, a kid stood up and looked at her mom and said, if he gets loose, you think he's going to attack us? going to be able to say a good source too, the master himself, the guy that you hear about in the gospel. Uh, have you ever just listened to the words of the sacred scripture and put them in their context and the environment, the history, the and realize the stuff that Jesus had coming out of his mouth was enough to make everybody sort of think he was a little bit crazy. And maybe that he needed to be tied up and caged, in a sense, too, because of his preaching. Often, the words of Jesus, they're purposely done in that way. And maybe Jesus said them with that same intention, for one reason and one reason only. Sometimes we need to be shocked back into reality so that we can understand the significance And I think that's important is the mental life of the church, specifically when we talk about the Eucharist. It's kind of scandalous to people who aren't classically versed in Catholicism, or perhaps people who have never had any interaction with the church to hear that we come here every single Sunday not to re-represent or to seek a symbol. We come here to receive truth shared for us. Are you desensitized because you hear those words and it really doesn't mean all that much? Life discourse is the gospel that we hear this weekend calling us to shake up our lives a little bit. Jesus is a good preacher, but of course the way that he goes about preaching can sometimes be a little bit scandalous. Because how does Jesus preach? Well, he always uses metaphors to say something is a lot like something else. Now, you and I don't always talk metaphorically every day in our conversation. Good old Americans, we're usually pretty direct, right? We say what it is that needs to be said, and there's no second guessing or reading in between the lines. made this crazy but if I came up to you and say I am the wind within your sails you would look at me like I am an absolute sacramentality. When he does use these metaphors, he's always getting into trouble with religious authorities. When he says, I am the light of the world, when he makes the Pharisees and the Sadducees sort of go a little bit bonkers. So they bring him in for What he's saying actually has He's taking their faith, their theology, and changing So if he says, I am... Uh, 
much. But if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, oh boy. Well, then you start to get people a little bit upset, sort of like a mad preacher getting tangled up in the cord over and over again. But what's interesting in John's gospel is that he never meant We don't speak Greek, so it's a little bit difficult for us to see what's in the some intentionality and specificity about the words that Jesus uses to describe this one particular mystery. Now, today's gospel So, of course, everybody wants to see this character, right? I mean, he managed to feed a whole bunch of people without even going to Carter's to buy provisions. So, they all come to find Jesus. And his reaction to them is very natural. I know why you guys are looking for me. You're hungry. You heard what I did last week. You're cheap. You want to make sure that I can... ...that are passing. And even though you might be full right now, you will never truly be fed. I am the bread of life. And until you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life within you. Scandalous enough to people of faith who have a particular religious ideology. Uh, but what... ...to say, I'm like the bread of life. He says, I am the bread of life. He doesn't say, maybe you can eat... I remember growing up as a kid, my mom always used to tell me, never chew with your mouth open, you little pig at the table, right? You had to have your proper manners. Jesus tells people to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Scandalous because they're thinking cannibalism 101 already. But the word that's used in... ...use and gnaws on with their mouth open until the food's actually falling out of it. That's the word that Jesus uses to show the importance of piggish manner because it's that important. Because it's not just merely a symbol, this is truly salvation that comes to you in earthly form, but in a miraculous... Because I think they still have shock value today. The problem is, you and I tend to desensitize ourselves to the importance of the mystery that we celebrate. Let's face it, we come to Mass every single significance of it, otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? I'd be preaching to an empty church right now. We know that it's important church Actually present is Christ himself in bread and wine turned body and blood. And if we did that, would that change our patterns of behavior? Sometimes I find us always kind of rushing in and rushing out. We try to get here at two minutes before the five minute after bus. And then we can't even finish up with the closing hymn because we run out as quickly as we possibly can. Or sometimes we fail to realize the significance of what's on the altar. And I'm like it too. We start to think about everything else that's going all around us. All the different things that are happening in the church. I feel it too because while I'm up there sometimes I'm thinking, what is that? But 
But what I think is are calling us back to is the significance and the shock value of what Jesus is saying. This is a gift to us. This is his body and blood. And unless we eat it and drink it, we won't have life within us. If we really believe that, would we change how we behave? So when our minds start again, so that we can focus on the importance of the mystery that we celebrate, Maybe we would come more frequently. Daily Mass is always open. You always have the opportunity to participate. It's the shock value of what Jesus is trying to get out of the gospel. And this isn't just some crazy preacher that's tied up in the cord around his legs. It's actually the word that we hear in the sacred scripture. They obey, they understand, and they come to follow Jesus. But then there's that cross section that says, Ooh, that's too much. I can't believe that. I can't. Jesus gives us those tremendous words to shock us back into reality and realize how important, how significant the Eucharist is that we share. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist, spared for other people to see Christ's body recognized in the other people that are in the congregation, in the sacred species that we will soon participate and share and gnaw on like hungry little piggies, but then also to go out there and to be that for other people, to be that evangelization committee that goes out and says, you know, this is going to bring us salvation, and we want you to participate in it too. We receive the bread of life. We want you to be able to share. And so, dear brothers and sisters, that the church and her members, clothed in God's likeness, may work to feed the hungry and spread the good news through the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in a world where so many are afflicted by hunger for food, freedom, and justice, nations may set aside differences and work responsibly for those who do not have... For those for whom life has become a journey through the wilderness... May they experience God's abiding that all who are ill with coronavirus, especially with the Delta variant, be healed. For the frontline workers and caregivers, may they remain healthy and not grow weary. And for continued success of the vaccine to rid us of this pandemic, we pray to the Lord, Lord that our parish community may be strengthened by the bread of life, to deepen our appreciation for the Eucharist, and to respond to the missionary call to feed our neighbor. We pray to the Lord, Lord that all who have died and who believe in Jesus in this life may enjoy the eternal banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord In silence, we pray through Christ for our own needs. And then have eternal life. Give us this bread always so that we may grow in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I ask you to remain standing and again, turn to the back of the church as we prepare for the baptism of these children.
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So we pray, Almighty ever living God, to free these children from original sin, make them the temple of your glory, and grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. And as a sign of this, we will anoint you with the oil of salvation in the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Okay. <laughs> and so, dear brothers and sisters, let us pray that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on these children by water and the Holy Spirit. New life by water and the you must make it your care to bring them up in the faith so that the divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in them day by day. And so if your faith makes you promises as well. And so I ask, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? I do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? 
This is the faith profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, that these children should receive baptism in the faith of the church that we have professed with you. Luke, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jacob, I baptize you in the name of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just checking you guys out as well. So we welcome our second newest member this evening, Mr. Jacob Young. Children, I will teach you how great is the My dear children, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. May this white garment be assigned to you of your Christian dignity, with your family and friends to help life.
light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your children enlightened by Christ may always walk as children of the light and persevering in the faith. May they run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. And so could I ask once again our congregation to join me in congratulating and welcoming these two newest members. And so Please join us in singing our offertory hymn number 945. I am the bread of life. And I will raise you up, and I will Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. For when you through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full Full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna. In the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of Therefore, these gifts we pray. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Bread and drink this cup. We proclaim the Lord again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer the of salvation. and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thy kingdom on bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live in Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Give each other the sign of peace. Thank you. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 941, Eat This Bread, number 941. Drink this cup, 
Come to him and never be hungry. Bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. And don't forget that our Catholic, your personal invitation. And if you need any help, call us at the parish office or contact Sandy Rayburn, our RCIA coordinator. Uh, mark your calendars in the bulletin this weekend. You will see that Our Lady's Auxiliary is sponsoring our normal back. seminarians. There's a laundry list of things that you could get for them, but one thing that they like more than anything else, gift cards, because then they can go and get whatever it is that they need. We'll be picking up those things on the 21st and 22nd of August, uh, right around the corner, uh, so you have your shopping list. Go out and show our love and support to our diocesan seminarians. Four o'clock mass, we have our monthly installment Found on a farm, or if it's part of an animal, bring it, and we will enjoy it with all of our company and friends next door at the parish hall. Also, every year we have what's called grief share, and if you've experienced the death of a loved one, a friend, and you find it very difficult to, to look forward with hope, with some optimism, uh, this grief recovery group might be for you. Uh, they meet on Wednesday. If you know someone who would like to and participate in our grief recovery ministry. Also, there are other handouts in the bulletin this weekend. The Ladies Auxiliary uh, has a retreat coming up with the State of Louisiana Ladies. Uh, I'll be doing the retreat, so if you want to hear yet again from me, you're welcome to come and participate uh, in that particular retreat. Uh, also, uh, our core team has, um, I think it's a retreat later on in the month of August. That information's in the bulletin. And then all the PSR information has gone out to parents that have registered in the in the book, and it's got all the information that continue to wake back up as we start back in August. Um, one of the things that I'm going to start doing after Mass, I'm going to be outside, but I'm not going to fist pump and handshake anymore. I'm just going to give you the collective wave. We've lost enough priests in the past couple of weeks who are out of commission, and we can't. 
been vaccinated, but I don't want to get any of your cooties, and I don't want to give you any of mine. Uh, so we will share a wave with each other outside uh, once we're done after Mass. And then last but not least, uh, you'll notice in the bulletin there are lots Natalia has served us for a couple of years, and she's one of our best accompanists, and we're going to definitely miss her, so thank her for her ministry here with us over at St. Margaret. And finally, if you're a guest or visitor, do come back. We always love you to worship with us in our parish community every weekend. Let us stand and pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of May Almighty God Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, number 689, Though the mountains may fall, number six. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand. As a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget you?
Bye.